Hey guys, this is Colin and I have a quick update for you this week. I'm going to show you some of the new features that are coming out in the next version of Beaver Builder. That's coming out, I believe, around about the week of October the 5th. So we've only got a couple more weeks. Uh, the beta is out now, 1.6.4. As you can see by this blog post here done by Justin, it gives you an outline of all the new stuff that's coming, but I'm going to give you a quick demo. So if you haven't seen the beta version of Beaver Builder, the new one that's coming out, this is going to show you what's coming. So here we go. I'm going to jump straight into my normal demo area here. I'm going to click on the page builder, of course. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the color picker. The color picker has changed. Okay, I'm going to move this one over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to target this icon here, and I'm going to go to image. Now, the color is here. Now, you'll notice also that the color picker icons just changed a little bit, but that doesn't make any difference. What's going to happen is I'm going to click on here. You'll notice that the color picker has changed quite a bit here. So we've got this nice simple interface now. If I click on the red, you can see you can move your cursor to anywhere along here to change the base of the palette. Okay, so to change it to green there. Now I can select my different shades of green that I want. So let's just make this one a really, really bright green. Let's move it up there. Now, as you can see, it's green. What I'm going to do is I've got this new feature here. You see this little plus sign? This will allow us to add this to a color preset and keep it saved for the rest of the site. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. And as you can see, that is now saved. OK, so if I save this and exit. OK, next module I go to, this one over here, I can now go to the image, choose the color and it goes to color presets it's there as you can see i'll just change that to green and save and it's as easy as that so basically let's uh, do a refresh here it's taking a little bit of time to refresh because i'm actually running two things at once here recording the screen uh, but add another color let's go over here let's make this one red shall we so we go to image and we'll go down here we'll make this a nice bright red and i'm going to save that you'll see that it'll update there in a second there we go okay a little bit slow because my machine is running two things at the same time. The video recording doesn't like it. But I'm going to click on that, add that to the presets. Now that's a color that I can use elsewhere within my theme now. Okay, so I'm going to click on save. Okay, so that's the color picker. Actually pretty cool. You know what? I'm going to make this one red over here because I don't like the green. I'm going to have the green in the middle. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to click on this color again. Now if I go to color presets, you'll see that my red is there. I can select the red save now no guessing it is the same color as that one so that's the color palette pretty cool there okay next one this is actually a really cool feature this is something that people have been asking for so if i click on done here quickly publish my changes you'll see that on this home page here we have this image and it only covers you know a portion of our screen here and then we can see the icons this is actually not a bad way to do it because at least the person that's looking at your site knows that there's something below this image but let's say you want to put an image across the whole page here now before what you had to do was go to the page builder and you kind of had to guess or push down the padding on these so i'll just show you the old way for example what i would do here is click on the row settings okay and i would actually go to you know, my um, advanced, I would push the padding down. So for example, I would put, um, I don't know, 600 on the bottom here, probably a little bit too much, but um, let's go 400, uh, 500 will go. Okay, that actually pushes the, the image down to the full width. And if I click on save, that's what my people would see when they came to my website is that but they don't know that it's something to scroll down to, but that, okay. But that, I had to guess at that number. You see how many times it took me to do that. So I'm gonna show you this new setting. Let me just go back in there and remove that. So I'm gonna to go to events. So I'm gonna put that back to 200 where it was before. Okay, save. And if I go back in this time, I'm gonna show you. So click on the wrench. I'm gonna show you this new setting here. You see this one? It says height, okay? So I'm just gonna go over the tooltip here. Full height rows fill the height of the browser window. So for the browser window is from here to here okay this is the header so it already takes part of the browser but we want to extend this this image right down to the bottom if this was a background color it would do the same thing so i'm going to click on full height and you'll watch this there's the magic done save okay and if i publish the changes on this that will fill the browser browser height no matter what i do so for example if i bring this in to a smaller size you see it will fill the browser if I bring this up here 
it still fills the browser. If I extend it down, it will go further down. If I bring this in, it still extends down. So mobiles are still covered. It's a really awesome feature and makes it really easy to make those full height images as soon as you start. So that's the full row height fills the, the viewport of the browser. So it's top to bottom of the browser, no matter what browser it is. So that's a really cool feature. Okay, and next on the list, and there's a whole bunch of things here, it's really cool. So we've got the row height, we've got the color picker, and the next thing, column settings. Okay, so we've got some new column settings. So I'm gonna go down here, and actually we'll work on these columns again here. So if I click on the column settings here, you'll see that uh, icon that's got what looks like two pages or a book, I guess, open. We'll click on that, now I have these drop-down menu that we didn't use to have before. So I've got edit column, which will allow me to go in and edit the settings. I've got delete column. So if I delete that, I obviously delete the column. I can insert in a column before. So if I click on this one, we're going to get a column just to the left here. And there you go. We've now got an extra column in there just by doing that, inserting before. I'm going to delete that. And same thing with the insert column after. Bring that one over here. And there it is. Okay, so I can add things over there. Now I'm going to delete that one again. What I also have in here is I have the reset widths. Now that really doesn't do anything right now because they're all 33% and if I click it you won't see any change. But I don't know if you notice this cool feature here. You see these handles. There's handles on each one of these columns now. Okay. So for example I can't drag that one out that way because there's no room to go and I can't drag that one that way because there's no room to go. But I can drag this one, for example, in, and I can drag this one over, and look how we can resize the columns dynamically. Isn't that cool? So we can do all the things we want there with just dragging, okay? So I can drag this one back a little bit, and we can have, for example, two narrow ones on the outside there, and one wide one, should I say, in the middle, just like that. Okay, now if we don't like that, we can just click on any of these, okay? and we can go reset column widths and put it all back to the way it was before. So that's pretty cool because if you don't, you know, don't want it, you can mess around and get it wrong and then just undo it by clicking on the reset. So that's the column settings. Pretty cool new features. I like this drop down a lot. It makes things a lot easier to, to work with. If I click on the edit column, we still have the same settings except I don't know if you notice we've got a new one here equalize column heights so let's go and have a quick look at that one I'm just going to click cancel and I'm going to do something really quick so let's say we want to add some more text in here you know I'm going to let's say put some put some text in here and we'll just put some there we go we've got an extra bit of uh, text probably a little bit too much so we'll take a little bit of that out but let's go up to that sentence there take that out okay bring that over there and as you can see we've got all this text probably still too much I'm just going to take out a couple of paragraphs there let's do that there we go that's better okay okay so I've, I've extended the text down there and I'm going to click save so that's the call out now if I go to the column settings I'd like to say let's set a, a nice background color for that so I'm going to click on the icon here edit column and I'm going to choose a background color over here Okay, you can choose an image if you want. So we're back to this color picker. And I'm just going to choose a, a medium gray here. So you'll see that in a second. Let's go there. There we go. So we've got a gray. Now, the problem is, is that these don't balance. Now, if I put a background on this color, for example, let's just do one over here. So edit column. And we're going to come down here and put a, let's put a slightly lighter gray in there. So there we go. Save. Now, the problem is, you see, we've got this unlevel columns and it looks kind of odd doesn't it when we've got all this text over here and the same thing over here so you know what if I go and do this one and we'll do this one a slightly darker color drag that over here so you can see go down to background click on color I'll make this one a lot darker um, there you can't see that text on there but it's kind of just demo purposes this so I'm going to click on that now we've got three shades of, of gray there, but as you can see, the column of the heights are not working. But now if we go back into the column settings, quick magic setting here. So click on column settings, edit column. If you do this in one of them, look at that. It brings the whole three of them the same length across. Isn't that cool? So you can have some fun with this because you can actually 
changing up colors and make some boxes out of this, but they'll always be equal height. And that is in the column settings, go to edit column, and it's one of the first things you'll see is the equalized columns heights. So if I take that off, it will go back to the normal. It's a global setting across the row. So no matter how many columns you've got here, it will balance the column height. So if I had two columns, it would be the same. If I had six columns, it, they would all be the same height. Really neat little feature, really quick. Okay, so what's next on the list? I'm gonna try and get through these really quick. I'm saving the best of last, by the way. We have some new font settings. Okay, so you're going to see on the headings we've got a heading right here okay so if i click on this heading we actually go into our style you'll notice that we have this whole new font settings here so we've got our font it's set, set to helvetica right now we've got a light and we can change it to bold and there you can see the the instant actions okay but one of the cool things is if i click on the fonts i've got all the google fonts now so let's just choose a really weird kind of uh font down here you know what audio wide there you go you can see the difference now normally you would have all your h1 h2 you know eight through to h6 tags defined in your theme and you want to try and keep those the same but sometimes you just want to override and just make a heading a little bit different and this is where this comes in handy so we've got this now it's an h2 tag for for purpose of the structure of the page but we've actually overridden the font and it's called now audio wide which is a google font by the way so that's the new font structure uh, it's pretty handy it only works in headings right now but uh, it is something you can override and obviously you can do the font size here uh, you can change your, your font size to a custom size and then you've got 36 there so if I click on save that's our new font settings so only available in headings though now the last but not least is the newest feature so we have a new module and I'm going to just scroll down here because I'm going to put them in here. So let's go to add content. We'll go to advanced modules and we're going to drag out this new one here. It's called the number counter. Okay, I'm actually going to drag it out below this particular column here or into this column, should I say. Okay, and as it defaults, it defaults to 100. Okay, so what we've got here is our general layout. We've got only numbers, which you can see the numbers there right now. We also have the circle counter okay this will actually put a circle which counts around there, there you go as you can see now it counts the circle and we also have the bars counter and you'll see this go from left to right on the bar and there's the animation okay we're going to change the animation speed and make them faster or slower uh, using the, the settings down here but I'm going to leave them at one second what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this back to the circle counter because I'm going to demonstrate how this works okay so that's going to go around there we go so right now we have a number of 100 okay and we've got the percent we don't have to have the percent we can have the standard okay so we can get rid of the percentage and just wait for that to ups there we go so we just have a number without the percentage now the total here is 100 so we want to make it a value of 100 so I'm going to put in 100 and the number that's displayed is 100 out of 100 but let's say we want to display 90 or you know 70 for example watch this so we've got the number there it's going to go around it's going to stop at 70 there we go as you can see now we can change the colors and stuff bef over here in style but before we do that we've got text before the number so I can actually put in a bit of text here so for example uh, I can put uh, text before and that's going to come in just above the uh, counter there okay and I also have text after okay so text after oops I didn't realize it no case there let's do that and so that's the text after now also I've got the number prefix so this could be for example I could put any anything I want here so for example um, I could put a for example and put space and then it's going to be a 70 when it counts up this time but you can put anything you want I'm going to take that one off because I've got an idea here so the number suffix here I'm going to put in something the so space hours and then that way I've got 70 hours as rafting there we go uh, you can see there all right so that's the settings on here the text before is above the text after is after the number prefix is anything you want to put before the actual number and then number suffix is the anything you want to put after so you can actually add different numbers and stuff in there anyway uh, you get the same effect on the 
bars counter if I go here it will change over to the bar counter now and you get the same thing you got the text before I don't know where my text after went I don't have text after as an option on here so it's actually got rid of that for us but I'm gonna go back to the circle counter because I like that one the best and what I'm gonna show you now is how we can change the colors so we're gonna go into the style tab now we've got some text color here so that's it's a text before and text after color the number color is actually the number and and the suffix there okay and this number size so right now we've got 32 pixels I'm gonna change that to 28 make it slightly smaller you'll see it shrink there there we go now if I change the text color for example let's make that red and I could have used the um, the one we had before okay now I'm going to make the number color Let's use our color presets from before. We've got the green. So I'm going to make that the green. And there we go. So we've got the text before, the actual number, and the text after. Now, I've also got the circle size here. So I've got it 200 pixels. I can actually make that bigger or smaller. So if I make it, I don't know if this is going to fit into this column, but let's make it 300 pixels. There you go. It's made it larger and let's make it smaller this time let's make it 100 i don't know what's going to happen here but let's do this and see what happens there we go it actually covers that so that's probably a little bit too small let's put that back to 200 and one thing i like here is the stroke size so right now it's set to 10 but if we wanted to put this to 30 it's going to be really thick and you can change that so there we go it's not quite fitting in there as you can see it's blocking off on the side so that's probably a little bit too much so if, for example we did 24 we can probably get that in there complete. No, just a little bit more. So we'll take that down to 20. And this is kind of one of those experiment things you have to do to fit into the column. There we go, nice and clean. And of course, we've got the foreground color. So once again, we'll go back to our color picker. We color presets. We can choose that red there, okay. And now we've got a nice red, okay. And the circle background color, it is actually white right now. But let's change that to something we can see a difference. We've already got the blue. Let's change it to blue. There we go. So there's the difference of the value. So we knew we had 100 to start off with, and that's 70% to go around there. So you can change that. So I'm going to get rid of that because I like the, the white. Or oh, actually, you know what would be a good color? Would be to take the red. And this is actually how you can do this. So you just want a slightly different shade. So we'll go to our color presets. Click on this one. Now we can just bring it up a little bit up here and you'll notice it will actually get a little bit fainter there. Perfect. Click on save and we've done. That's our counter. So best thing you can do if you want them to go all the way across here, the same is to click on duplicate. I'll drag that one across over here now. Put that in there below. There we go. We're going to duplicate again. And we're going to drag that one across below here and duplicate one more time. And then we'll drag that one across underneath here. There we go. So now we're all going to do is go into our settings on each one. So for example, this one would be 80 hours. Save. And this one will be 90 hours. Save. And then this one will be 100 hours. So it will go all the way around. And click Save. That's our bars. As you can see, different different values. Terrible colors, but I wanted to show you the, the way that it worked. So that is the bar counter, and or the number counter, and the animation. So if I click Done, Publish Changes, we're all done there. And as you can see, the first row has gone to the browser height. I've come down here. I haven't actually set these to be equal heights, but that's really easy now. You can set them to be equal heights. And then we've got the counters. And as you can see, when they come into the view, they animate and they go all the way around. That's it for today. A bit of a long one, a lot of new features here, but congratulations to the Beaver Builder team on doing an awesome job and really, really awesome guys. And you can see these features in the regular version, not the beta version, but the regular version that should be out the week of the 5th of October. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this video. Hope you like all my videos. If you do, please click on the like button. Feel free to leave a comment. I try to answer all the comments. And also, uh, please tell your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.